Hello and welcome back to Chicken Police, Paint It Red. When we last left off, we were at a crime scene, a murder crime scene, and we found in the uh, uh, fireplace this little safe. Hmm. See a whole bunch of these things. So yeah, I've got a uh, some kind of seabird. Sheep, tiger, wolf or a fox, a lion, a, uh, that looks like a falcon, uh, it also looks like a wolf, so, yeah, I think that might be a fox, whereas that's more of a wolf, but we've seen something very similar to this, right? Yeah, over at the, um, police station there is the uh, crest of the town that had a uh, oh one of these kind of birds um, not a flamingo a sandpiper I think that's what that is sandpiper I believe this one was yep a ram or a sh uh, sheep down here was a fox, and over here was a lion. Aha! Hello there. What could this be? Maybe a piece of a painting. And there's some kind of squiggle on it. The signature of the painter? Yeah, I can't make it out. Hmm. It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure this is what Natasha wanted to show us. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, everything we can do here. Head here. Okay, maybe there's something else I didn't uh, get. Interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. Anything else? No? So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Well, maybe Natasha can help us. After all, this is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Oh, well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. Yeah, true. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? We could do that, but I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. A uh, bourbon in my office? Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. Right answer. <laughs> SN. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities. But we must find out where it's from. Mm -hmm.
Ten, er, Natasha Kinsenko's weekend house. Stands in the cleanest, most separated corner of the city. Flower Bill. Curious what she's hiding there. Well. Right up there. Tiny kiosk in the heart of uh, Calvera Island. Small, almost invisible, but hides one of the most crucial things in this shithole. Knowledge. Hmm. Well, let's head to the newsstand then. Should we say hi to the old beaver? Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. Mm -hmm. Few people know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. Good to know. Oh. Dead Silent Night. A chicken police story. Mullen's car. car. Ancient, but kind of beautiful. Like the old beaver himself. The taxi company for the upper class only. Politicians and gangsters. Mm. I had a chance to travel in one of these once. I was being taken to my own execution. But that's another story. Oh. I had a chance to... Seems like the kiosk is still a good business. That's good. Some things are indestructible, right? Yeah. Mullen's kiosk's been here since I was a little chick. My old man used to drive here from the other side of town for his daily papers. Interesting. Yeah, many still do. He certainly is something. Mullen's a wizard from a forgotten age. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> this newspaper booth has been standing here for more than a hundred years. It was always run by the Mullen family, like some strange monument to a forgotten age. Mm. This newspaper booth, Chandler's, used to be quite a prestigious cafe. Magnificent animals had breakfast here, and in the evenings, philosophers and writers would get drunk together and argue. The place is now just a second-hand bookshop, just a shadow of its former self. Like so many things in this city. Like me. Mm. I wonder if they've got the entire Chicken Police series. It, not that I give a cluck, of course. But... <laughs> you get residuals? I wonder if they've... The Clawville Chronicle. The most read and probably the most biased newspaper in the city. It's supposed to be a royalist rag. But the separatist overtones are getting stronger and stronger every day. Mm. The Chronicle either put the chicken police on a pedestal or it was gnawing on our drumsticks. <laughs> Mostly thanks to our dear friend, Timothy Saltwater. We made it much easier to sell the paper until the public got bored. I see. The Chronicle eat. Well, let's talk to Mullen. We're getting older and older, and Mullen's not changing a bit. Where's the justice in that? He's just eternal. Like an ancient god or something. Or the personification of the city. What a lovely thought. But if the city took shape, it would most likely be some kind of vermin. Yeah, true. But that wasn't uh, very uh, politically correct, coming from you, pal. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know I didn't mean it like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know, Marty. You're too good for this world. Ah, oh, thanks, boss. It wasn't a compliment, Marty. <laughs> Mullen never closes his kiosk, not even on New Year's Eve. Goodness. Hey, Hercule. What's up, old friend? Hello, me lads. It's good to see you. What are you doing around here where you never see a cat, go boy? <laughs> <laughs> We're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. Oh, but it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. No. I'm afraid it is. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. No. <laughs> What a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. 
I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, eh? <laughs> You're like me sons, so you are. <laughs> oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. Oh. A lot more information here. Hercule Mullen, species beaver, genus castor. Gender male, special features old and full of secrets, like the city itself. Will is an old comrade from uh, before the times took place, so from terribly long ago. I used to call him Uncle Mullen even when I was just a fresh patrolman. Even though he's only a couple of years older than me, he represents many things I wanted to become. Honest, wise, and always cheerful. Will knows almost everything about uh, everyone worth knowing, which he used to our advantage. Yeah. Else What's can speak up, old of? man? Is everything all right? Yeah. Uh, me bones are creaking. Me eyesight's getting more and more blurry. And sometimes I hear sounds that aren't even there. I think I'm getting old. Well, maybe I've gone crazy already, but the old ticker's still ticking. So, here I am. <laughs> ah, it's good to still have an old familiar spot in the city. Yep. Ah, nothing lasts forever, boys. So, what is this dirt you've ended up in again, eh? Ah, uh, just a simple case, strumming personal strings. That's why I couldn't refuse it. You know the tune. Mm-hmm. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same old song, eh? Yeah, it's a classic. So, what is it you want to know? I'm at your service, my lads. Thanks, old pal. Let's see. Well, let's ask about himself. How's Desire? Desire. I guess that's one way how you can pronounce that. What about her? She's still beautiful, and she's still my wife. And I still don't get why she hasn't met me already. Because <laughs> she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. You see, you're right about that, sonny boy. And, uh, the cubs? Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clawville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. Yeah, good I know, pal. They're from a good letter. <laughs> if you say so, sonny. Oh, we got some more information. Let's check that out. All Mullen's uh, kids flew the nest a long time ago, but it's eternal and unstoppable. It's like some kind of ancient rock the city's built upon. Crestmore, Savannah country has been one of the colonies of Fogville for two centuries. Before gaining its freedom in 792, Crestmore is mostly inhabited by peaceful herbivore species of exotic species. Hmm. Well, let's see what he knows about my partner. Hey, Martin Millat, what's up? How's that beautiful wife of yours? Laura's perfectly fine, thank you. <laughs> it's crazy you could grab an amazing woman like her, son. Are you blackmailing her with something? <laughs> nah, I missed your famous beaver humor. I'm just messing with you, son. Anyway, you look good. You're in good shape. You look more like a turkey than a rooster, if you ask me. Um, thanks. This is priceless. Thanks, Hercule. We'll be back again <laughs> soon. Yeah, sure will. Um... What? Yeah, ask about Monica. Nice girl. She used to come here for a while, but I, I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for workaholism. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station, if she sleeps at all. Yeah. Some animals just race and race through the years of their life until someone stops them and makes them wind down. Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed, there is. Somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. 
Let's ask about uh, Wessler. Eben's a ruthless gangster, that's for sure. But he's not bloodthirsty or stupid. You're not in danger until you're in his way. And that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. Yeah. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> of course they tried. They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mongrel <laughs> Mick, Ibn's number one punk, came here and threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my cold dead carcass. <laughs> well, looks like it worked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too much for them, lads. Or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. Oh, I'd imagine most people avoid fire. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm a poor nobody, my lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So, he usually listens to reason. Uh, <laughs> when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. Mm. That's uncharacteristic. Are you sure it was him? Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Yeah. Of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. <laughs> Good one again. Yeah. And let's ask about Nat. You know anything about a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? That lass is Ibn Wessler's protege, to put it politely. Mm. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a gal such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Well, too late for that. Well, I suppose I should have come to you first for advice. Doesn't matter now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can, and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything, uh, interesting? As yeah. I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville. But from what? No one knows. Some years of her life are shrouded in mystery. And that really means good. Mm -hmm. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful. At least, silly boy. And one more thing. What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Thanks, Hercule. I wasn't planning to. <laughs> Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just take care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old-timer. He has a lot of pockets. I know, Martin. I know. Okay. Well, that's all of that. We got a lot of information for that. We know where Natasha comes uh, to Clawville from. Several years in her life are completely dark to us. Not even the all-knowing Mullen could tell us more about her. Where does fiance is Laura? Beautiful, warm-hearted predator. I don't know what she sees in Marty, but he's too damn lucky to have a woman uh, for him. Ibn's dirty little paws reach every corner of Dark City. Even good old Mullen was approached by his men several times. Monica's such a workaholic, she uh, even moved to the block opposite the PD. But despite the move, she still sleeps at the station very often. Wow. Let's, uh... Yeah, let's go take a visit to the PD. Phyllis and Roy's are nowhere to be seen. Praise the great wild ones. <laughs> well, let's hope this is a good omen. Maybe, finally, the pincushions have started to do something with themselves. Maybe. And maybe it's not a coincidence, since we've just found a dead body, Marty. Yeah, what can I say? The night's starting to get off, huh? Just like the good old days. 
Uh, well, let's just hope there won't be any more surprises tonight. You don't believe that, do you, boss? Nope. Let's see here. Oh, there's blood boil here. Shouting in three, two, one. And action. Martin, what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> we're just patrolling, sir. Yeah. At the station? No, we're here for something else, sir. Yeah. You missed me, huh? No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I, I mean... Why are you grinning, Santino? I can't grin, sir. I have a beak. Yeah. Oh, be cute. I can see it in your eyes. Should I close them, sir? Don't you peck at me, chicken, you hear? We're not even here anymore, Chief. We just quickly stopped by for something. Get out of my sight. Yes, sir. You're on you know, duty. Am I right, Martin? Yes, sir. And why the hell are you standing here? Don't you have something to do? I do, sir. Then fuck off. <laughs> and you, Sonny. Don't even think about saying anything. I can already see you're dying to say something funny. I wouldn't think about it, sir. No, you just would. You're on duty. No. Yes, sir. And why? I do. Then I wouldn't think about. Officer Barkman, one of Blood Boil's little proteges. Mm -hmm. Officer. Ba well, we'll call it a video here. When we come back, I guess we'll talk to Monica. Have a good one.